Yo guys, I've got a spark sure, which I'm sure. going to use to ignite the fire for a brand new episode of the Scarlet Imaginator Soul Seeker series here in the channel. Today we're going to kick things off with none other than Shelmont Shores in it of itself. A very rather exciting level this one, uh, but we're going to have to skip over the NSOD2 before we can even think about getting into it. So whilst we begin the episode as Ambush, we get to now instead uh, replace him as the Water Imaginator takes his place, the very originally named Water Brawler. It took me every single brain cell I had left coming up with that name it did. So what we want to do here is we want to collect absolutely everything in sight, including this treasure chest back here, which is going to go to good use with the Water Brawler, unlike it would have with uh, Ambush, because Ambush is maxed out on treasure, so he physically cannot collect anymore because his chip cannot store any more than 65,000, which he has already. The water ball on the other hand can use for treasure for upgrade, so that is uh, particularly useful. I'm going to fall off the edge of the map, which isn't quite as useful, mind you. Yeah, here we go, this time with a little less falling, I hope. There you go, that's what non-failure looks like, I guess. I wouldn't know, I don't see non-failure on a regular basis. So I suppose that is what it looks like if I were to guess what it looks like. Well, let's grab the bananas right there, because if you eat five banana bunches in this level, then you can acquire an achievement or a trophy, depending on whether you're uh, playing this game on the Xbox or the PlayStation. Really, though, that's the only difference between versions of this game. The fact that the PlayStation has trophies, the Xbox has achievements, the Wii U has neither, and the Switch doesn't have racing. The Switch is the most expensive version of the game, and it has the least amount of content of any of the versions of the game. That makes sense to me. Hell of a time to introduce the Patrick meme, I'll tell you that. Okay, this fellow's gonna say some things, we're gonna ignore him in his entirety because what he has to say is not important. I'm joking, of course, Blobbers is my boy, I love being a good bit of Blobbers. In fact, just him being in this level has by default made this level infinitely better. Alright, see ya Blobbers, he's out here, couldn't blame him. This is uh, pretty terrifying right now, all of these uh, storms that are about the place. Anyway, we're going to change uh, the element of the area to light currently, but we haven't seeked out the source of any light elemental characters, so we will remain, obviously, as the water brawler at hand. Let's grab the key, because we're going to be needing that in a bit. And we're going to wait for the tornado to pop all the way back up. We're going to hit this switch so that then the tornado doesn't come back for its revenge. Okay, can we sneak by the tornado? No, no, we cannot. So instead, we're just going to have to follow it through so we can seek out the soul of Mr. Mr. Cat. Cat Konnichi Pow! Because, you know, they got to make a pun on Mr. the Cat. Japanese greeting Konnichiwa, which doesn't just mean hello in Japanese, it's your standard greeting. A bit like how there's multiple ways to say hi in English. Obviously, we have hello, we have hi. And those are just a few of the examples, mind you. So let's go on ahead and unlock this because I've had enough of that uh, locked up gate staring at me funny. And we have a night shrine to where Ambush is going to be able to take advantage and unlock this shrine, granting us new Imaginite gear. That's going to be pretty neat. But unfortunately, his fellow knights, Wildstorm and Blastatron, their souls are yet to have been seeked out, so we'll have to return to this level in a future time in order to access the shrine with both of them. For now, though, we have this epic mess to look forward to. Ho ho ho, it's so freaking neat! Ambush is that of a badass! That's putting it mildly. Power so without further ado, let's be grinding this section out and let's hope for a little more uh, success this time. Let's hope we don't fail it unlike we did at uh, Scholarfill. Where we somehow phased through the Imaginite Chunk and did not collect it because the game could be garbage at points and that was one of said points where it was being garbage. Okay, there we go. Never mind about uh, being successful with this, I suppose. Because being successful with this is clearly asking too much. Oh no, actually, we want to go to the left here, because if we fail the grind section, we get to restart it, so we can have another shot at collecting all of these imaginary chunks. So this time, let's uh, try to do this a little bit better. How does that sound? I like that fine, actually. I like it a lot. So can we collect the piece if we go to the right side in advance, is a question. Uh, no, apparently that still misses, so I think we need to jump to the right side with the correct timing. 
Anyway, if we stick on the left, then that means we'll be able to restart the grind mission again. And that time, we're not even going to take damage from it, because that fella had already uh, given us the original chunk of damage, so now he's been uh, deflated. Rather convenient that, because it means that I can do this again and again without uh, ambush, taking too much damage, uh, at the risk of him being defeated in battle. All in class is dead, where he cannot be used again. Apart from the series, that would be annoying. There we go, now we got the chunk just fine. A little bit of delayed reaction, but that's alright, isn't it? That's perfectly fine. As long as we got the imaginary chunk, that's all what matters. I was a bit worried that I uh, jumped over it for a moment there. But luckily we didn't. We're now at 7 of 11. That's 8, 9, and we have 2 more, obviously, because 11 take away uh, 2 is 9. And we have one final chunk, which, once again, I need to time the railing jump correctly. Or, you know, I don't. Apparently, I just need to be on the correct side of railing, and we'll be just fine. But it would appear as though Ambush has had enough screen time in the series already. The series is now fed up of Ambush constantly being on the portal of power, so it's telling me to switch out instead to a Sky to correspond with the Earth element. Now, because we've seeked out the soul of every single Earth character possible, I have plenty of uh, choices to pick from. And in this case, is going to be Triton. But the version specifically is going to be his legendary iteration, because we are taking advantage of the Sensei MVP for the Sky as Imaginators versus series. You guys voted legendary try tip as your six eight MVP. So right now, I feel as though it's only right that we stick with the exact same version. After all, he was quite literally an uh, absolute legendary unit in the uh, Versus series. So I'm expecting nothing less from him here as well, where he can be an absolutely legendary unit, quite literally, in fact, because he is not. He is no regular try tip. He is in fact legendary try tip. Boom, let's take him out. I almost feel sorry for these fellas right now. So it is weird to be playing him um, during the Earth sections of the game because obviously in the Imaginators, uh, in the Imaginators versus series, he represents the light element rather than the Earth element. And let's get him! What do you know? I didn't even need the swing in the end. The batter up was sort of wasted, and I'm not okay with that. I repeat, I am definitely not okay with that. Yeah, let's take out these fools. Boom, baby. Oh, that's some grade A wrecking right there. Now, there's another banana bunch for the sake of you trophy and achievement hunters out there. But we're more fascinated by the might of the treasure chest because using this, we can finally acquire this man's soul gem. He got through and beasted the entirety of the Imaginators Versus series, even without a soul gem. That is definitely what proved him as the worthy MVP of the Sensei cast throughout that series, so it's only right to bring him back for the might of the Soul Seeker series. We even changed up to his legendary icon on the um, top right hand corner of the screen, as you can see from the graphic. And speaking of the graphics, something else is going to light up as we seek out the soul of the Swashbuckler Imaginator. So the randomly generated uh, element for the Swashbuckler Imaginator is something that we're going to find out after we've previewed uh, what the Swashbuckler Imaginators are going to look like. Yeah, that's pretty neat right there. But it would appear as though the element randomly generated to represent the uh, Swashbuckler Imaginator class was actually that of the magic element. So rather than a magic sorcerer like the original um, Soul Seeker series we did, we instead have a magic Swashbuckler. Uh, apparently the magic element can't get away from a battle class is beginning with the letter S. But here we are, let's obviously find where Swashbucklers can be found. There you are. It helps that the uh, Swashbuckler outline looks just like Ninjini. And obviously Ninjini was also a magic Swashbuckler from Skarnas Giants. So without further ado, let's create a Swashbuckler. We're not going to make it look like Ninjini though, because making it look like Ninjini would be very underwhelming. We have that scar already, we don't need to uh, recreate it through Imaginite parts. But at the moment we're just going to randomise our look completely for something that looks absolutely abysmal, but that is half of the fun of the game right now. Okay, apparently Glitter is going to be the big chunk of the Magic Swashbuck Glitter's catchphrase. Because you know what? Why the heck not, right? Glitter is pretty epic. But say, there would be no fun in replicating uh, Ninjini for the Magic Swashbuckler since she's a Skarner already in of itself. I'd rather use my creativity and make something completely 
a wholly original, something that is 1000% my own creation. Yeah, there you go. But I love the fact that every single time developers start uh, introducing, like, uh, development tools into their franchises, you know, means in which you can create your own uh, content. That is when people start to learn just how difficult character level design is. In Mario Maker 2, we get so many terrible levels because uh, Nintendo know what they're doing when it comes to level design. However, your average uh, player does not. So therefore, the uh, difference in the quality of level design from uh, professional Nintendo developers and then the contrast of that with uh, random gamers, it is a significant difference indeed. But here we are, let's struggle this thing out of here! Like all of the other um, shrine cutscenes, that was Sky indeed pretty epic. But we're going to stick with Wolfgang right now, I don't care that the, um, the area is still Earth. We're going to break our rules just this once so that then I don't need to keep switching out all the time because that's going to get really tiresome after a while. The level is already repetitive enough as is without the need of constant switching out between characters as well on top of that. So let's uh, beat okay, this guy at creation class back for ado. As our harp bow phases through his head for some reason. But here we go with our game of creation class. Wildstorm Wild is gonna be played there, so we're gonna play Top Scots in the bottom right hand corner. Boom, take it out. Oh, Flare Wolf, that's uncool, man. So uncool. So what we're going to do to combat that is take Wildstorm back again. Yes, with the good old mighty Grave Clubber. Oh, why would you do that? Now they're going to take Grave Club away from me. Now that's just rude right there. And there isn't actually any stones I can use to take any of these other stones, uh, except for Wolfgang. So I suppose the best move to do now would be to play defensively. Not that anything could take a chop stop from their deck anyway. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do a double take because they stupidly placed Dr. Neocortex right there where I can... Well, I can't take Dr. Neocortex with Wolfgang. We can take Starcast at least, which is still going to result in us winning the match. It doesn't doesn't matter whether we won by 5-4 to four, or whether we won by somehow getting 9-0, even though that is physically impossible. But still, no matter how close the game is, a win is still a win. Okay, let's be hitting that switch right there. That's what we're talking about, baby. Now we're going to make our way all the way around, because this is where we have another collectible that we can call our own. That of the legendary selfie frame for the squad couple of class. Oh wow, what do you know? We can jump over that. That's convenient for the sake of speeding uh, through this level like an absolute speeding demon. Like the absolute speeding demon that we are, because that's Wolfgang for you. He is quick. He is, dare I even say, faster than fast. Quicker than quick. So he's not lightning. There's only one lightning, and that's Owen Wilson. Wow. I think Owen Wilson would be proud of that quote right there. Now, let's continue into this section where life has popped up so it's time to switch out for one of the brand new souls we seeked out in the previous episode that being the soul belonging to jumping mage yes it's time to see firsthand just how busted this character truly is <laughs> now that i'm a sensei there is nothing your imaginators can't <laughs> oh, that pun is so hilarious. Chomper Mage, he's a punny guy. Anyway, we've unlocked a secret technique for the Bazooka class, which is very convenient because we have a Bazooka class um, Earth Imaginator, so possessing that will mean that they can take advantage of it. Yeah, these guys, they never stood a chance. They, they had no idea what they were up against. I mean, the best part is that we don't even need to be up close and personal to these guys right now. We can just, like, hang back and let the Chompies do all the hard lifting for us. And if we don't want to use Chompies, that's what we have a charged up ability for. We can fire off our own staff and just uh, watch as it explodes. Okay, there you go. Let's finish them all off. Every last one of them! Yeah, nothing is going to survive this. Nothing is going to get past the wrath of Chompy Mage. He even has a knockback ability for when anything gets close. So if anything does get remotely close to him, which hardly ever happens, but even when it does, we can knock it back instantly. Unless, obviously, it's a big enemy like the one we're fighting right now. 
But that's not going to matter because we can keep our distance uh, with ease and just let the Toffees do all the work for us. Yeah, there you go. I keep wanting to attack the Chompies thinking that they're enemies, but I shouldn't be doing that given that they are my own Chompies. That's the only bad part about Chompy Mage, getting confused as to which Chompies are your own Chompies and which Chompies are the enemy Chompies. With that being said, we're going to pop all the way over to the left side first. We're going to grab that Experience Orb, not that Chompy Mage even needs it. I have played as him a turn, as you can tell from both his treasure count and the fact that he's maxed out. But why would I not play as Green Chompy a turn when he is as overpowered as he is? So here we are with yet another soul I haven't seen out. The soul belonging to that of Dr. Crankcase. Let's see what this character has to offer. Yep, just like uh, all of the other senseis we've seen so far, what Dr. Crankcase has to offer is a lot of badassery, which is definitely a word 1000% because I said so. If it wasn't before, I, I've invented it. This is how it goes. My word is final. And I don't even make up the rules. Those are just for, you know, unstated rules for society. For the fact that what I say goes, I deem it fit. Um, and those are just for rules. Okay, I don't make them up. I just reinforce them. Anyway, it is rather unfortunate that we're playing as a particularly slow character right now. Because we are not in combat. So the slowness uh, really does harm the pacing of the video game. If we're in combat right now, it'd be so much more fast paced. Because as we saw earlier in the combat, Chompy Mage is absolutely annihilative. Which again, is definitely a word. If it wasn't before now, it is uh, now because I said so. The air element is stronger here. So we get to move from one overpowered character to another in the form of Airstrike. Yes, there we go. It's our boy right here. Our boy and his bird. I can't forget his bird. is also a broken bird. So he's been taken out. We have an egg rescue uh, mini game to be attending to. But say, the slow walking speed of characters like Chompy Mage, it makes it so anything outside of combat isn't any fun. But at least Chompy Mage is really fun inside of combat. He definitely has that going for him. I can say that in confidence. Oh. There you go, that's better. Let's take him out before he takes out our egg. Again, it's going to be very hard to rescue the eggs if the eggs are destroyed by the uh, rats. We can't live up to egg rescue without having rescued the eggs. And now we're going to pop all the way up here where there's going to be a troll radio because it's not particularly well hidden. In fact, nothing in this level is particularly well hidden because this is one of the few levels in this game that I got 100% for, at least when it came to the flexibles. And I did that on my first ever go through of a level. Oh yes, we love ourselves a bit of chicken dinner as we've established already from the previous episodes of the Skyrim Imaginator Soul Six series here on the channel. We have so many chests that have been added to fold, it's glorious. But now about for food, let's uh, be successful on this grind challenge. Or else! I'll just have to restart it. Yep, that's pretty much the or else, nothing uh, too major. But you know what, I'd rather not have to restart it over and over again. So instead, how about we just do this awesome thing which is called being successful on the first go around. Being a successful on the first go around is the coolest possible thing we could do right here. So how about I shut up and we do it. Let's do it. Okay, four more to go. And luckily they all come in chunks of two. So now that we've got them two, it's the final two that I need. And we got them. We cut it close, but we got them all the same. That is awesome. And since things are stronger here, that certainly is convenient, given that Airstrike over here is in fact a Sensei. Oh, is that right, Mr. Jetpack Person? Is that right, is it? Anyway, that bird is going to land. Pretty convenient, that. And we're going to make our way over there. I'm pretty sure I missed a bunch of the bananas, so anyone who's looking to use this video as a guide, so to say, for all of the uh, banana bunches for the achievement uh, of the trophy, you're not going to be able to find a decent guide from it here, I'm afraid, given that I've missed a bunch of the banana chunks already. Well, you know, I just bypassed them because I didn't need them at the time. That's also a possibility. I know where they all are. It's just uh, I can't always be bothered to get them every single time if I don't need the healing. I forget that it's required for an achievement or a trophy because I already have the trophy. I, in fact, have the platinum trophy for this game on the PlayStation. And I recently bought the game on Xbox One, so now I need to actually play it before I can start earning achievements on it. Okay, let's take out these fellas right here. 
We got hit. That was awful. Was really rude. We got hit again. Stop hitting me. Uncalled for, bro. Uncalled for. Okay, let's get more A's again. Oh, that's a very conveniently placed wall down right there. We take those. And there goes that guy. Sweet! We cut it close, but in the end it doesn't even matter, because uh, whether we have one health or 2,000 health, having health is still health, and that means that we are not defeated from battle. We get to continue playing as the Skander throughout the rest of the series. And here we are with more of the mighty treasure around here. Treasure does not go to waste, because unlike uh, Ambush, Airstrike is not yet maxed out on his treasure count. Rather convenient, that. Because it means the treasure I'm currently collecting does not go to waste. Now, for once, when I say I took out that wheel because it looked to me funny, I can actually mean that because it had a singular eye, and that singular eye was, in fact, looking at me funny. I did not like the look it was giving me. So, I destroyed it. Simple as that. But there's a banana bunch, which for once I actually need, so we're going to go out of our way to acquire it. But for those of you who are trying to get that bar of banana bunch um, achievement or trophy, you should get the trophy or the achievement right as you eat that banana bunch right there because that is the final one the level has to offer. If your trophy or achievement was not activated when you ate that banana bunch, then it means that you missed one um, in the middle uh, of the level somewhere. Okay, cool. We're going to slowly before we take everything out. Boom, boom. We're going to shake the room some more. That guy, we literally shook his room. We shook his room so far off the uh, base of the planet that, uh, you know, he got knocked off the edge and died instantly. Oh, very glorious indeed. Now let's take him out. There we go. That's what we're talking about. So now let's pop into this giant, massive spinning thingy. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. I love myself a good, massive, giant spinning thingy. Okay, here we go. Let's try not to fall off it. And I am going to do something that is just blatant cheating, and I do not care because I'm not about to let that experience go to waste. Not when we instead have a magic swashbuckler who needs to fight the swashbuckler doom lander, and the experience can instead go to our weird pirate dude. Yes, give me experience. That's brought us up to level 6 already, so we can already acquire... Uh, well, we can already place onto our character for the ultimate gear that we have acquired along the way. So let's do that. At least then we have some sort of uh, buffs for our character going into the Swashbuckler Doom fight, including these horse swords, which definitely uh, give us the best stats here. Actually, no, I think I prefer the armor over the speed, so we'll go with the scimitars instead. Venom Blade, so you play as Venom in Spider-Man, and that is a ton of fun, but... Um, What's also fun is acquiring legendary gear for this hero imaginator. So let's see how are our stats looking. We got look and armor, look and armor, look and speed, more look, more look, more look, more look. And armor. Actually, look and armor is the best possible combination we could be hoping for. I'm trying to look for something that's more armor based than look, but it seems as though for headgear speciality is in fact armor. Uh well, it is in fact look and armor, I should say. So between um both of those stats it seems as though 48 look and for uh, and 18 armor is the best we're going to get so here we have the shoulder pads armor and look armor and speed uh wow that is uh, some really high buffed up armor and speed i think that's the best we're going to get especially since now we're flicking through all of those other shoulder pads and um all what they were doing were giving us red markers for deeper than our scanner rather than doing what we want which is buffing them up so 31 and 12, that's definitely the kind of stats we're looking for. Look at all that armor right there, it's glorious. Uh, anyway, we could really do with more um, power rather than armor because we have plenty of that to go around. But it seems as though uh, this is actually the best we're going to get. It doesn't matter that the gear is not visible on Imaginators of this class because we're here solely for the buffs. So now the final piece we need is some attack and some um, armor, which we're going to get from the lionfish backpack right here. So now our Imaginator is already looking a million times better. We're even going to give it a new overall theme. Presto, baby! And then we can make his eyes like some insane color, like Plum Perfect, for example. And there is what our new magic swashbuckler is looking like. Take him out! Oh, really, 
Okay, so that's what our secondary abilities do, and at the moment our secondary ability seems to be of no help to us whatsoever. Okay, here we go. Secret technique time! Take my secret technique to the face! Okay, boom, let's bring swords all around us. That's what we're talking about, man. That's what we're talking about. Oh dear, now they're attacking us, and that's rude. We don't like it when they attack us. We don't like it at all. Okay, there we go. Secret technique power! Anyway, I know that we've already been to this screen enough already today, but we're actually going to change up our abilities because having a ranged attack is going to be far more useful to us now than anything else. So we're going to have some magic orbs, and then for our secret technique, uh, for one we have already, is definitely going to be our best option for the moment. And that is until we unlock new secret techniques, we obviously get one from defeating this here um, Swashbuckler Doomlander. Then we get another one when we place a Swashbuckler Sensei onto the portal for the first time. Some of which we have not done yet, because we haven't placed a Chain Reaction, Bad Juju, or Aurora onto the portal as of just yet, which is why we're missing one of those other secret techniques. That's why we instead only have uh, two to our name when it comes to the secret technique powers. Take him out, take him out, take him out, out, out. And as you can see, I'm already twice as effective uh, after having switched to more projectile oriented attacks. Yeah, that's nice, but I can hit you from the other side of the stage, so clearly I am the superior creation. I'm a superior creation by default because I have this uh, magical invention known as projectiles. So yeah, that does in fact make me pretty busted. Especially when you have to come all the way up close and personal with me in order to attack me. And I can instead just hang back and deal damage to you from my, my projectiles over here. Man, I feel sorry for this swashbuckle doom man right here. At least I almost do anyway. Take him out, take him out, take him out, 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 take him out, take him out, take him out, out, out. And do it all in style too, with the mind of that awesome dude I just um, conjured up on the spot right there. So level 9 already for our magic swashbuckler, that's pretty neat, but we are missing a ton of treasure for this character in order to obviously afford some of the upgrades to the abilities we just uh, switched over to. That's nice, Chaos. I mean, not really, it's not really that nice. That was a lie. Let's open up this magic light chest, be done with the level, and then conclude the episode at that. So we're getting that secret technique I was alluding to earlier, as well as a bunch of new catchphrase pieces and some headgear alongside a backpack and some swashbuckle weapons. The Doom, the Skeletors, they look awesome, but they're not nearly as powerful as our uh, side thingies we have right now, so we're going to stick with those, most definitely. And what we have here is... Every single objective except for the speedrun, but we will take those most definitely. And here we are with more unnecessary deep stuff for us to skip over while I press the best bit of video game for skipping. So, you see that magic elemental realm in the background? Yeah, in the next episode, I'm going to deal with that tyranny so that then we never have to deal with it ever again. But luckily, I can save that until the next episode. So, I'll see you next week when we go through literally the worst level of the entire franchise yeah i'm not looking forward to it either but it's one thing that we've got to do we've got to get it out of the way and done with which is why i'm glad that after the next episode we're not gonna have to deal with it ever again that being said and done let's roll the outro without further ado i cannot in good conscience end of this video without first thanking all of my incredible channel members whose continued support helped make these videos possible Without them, these videos would be near impossible to make, so from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate every last one of them. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, there are plenty of options on screen now to explore, and please consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. On that note, this video is coming to an end, so thank you so much as always for watching. Until the next video arises, peace!